Welcome to the Romance Podcast. A very, very big episode because it's Yay. our first guest ever on the Romance Podcast. And that was guests plural. Yes, guests. <laughs> <A lot of S's. laughs> um, here's the deal. We are so excited about these guests, guests, because um, <laughs> I promise that's the last time we're going to do that. Okay. Um, but we are very, very excited because these are two of the best people that we know. It is Val Warner from ABC7 Chicago's Windy City Live, Windy City Weekend, Countdown Chicago, New Year's Eve. She's also the news anchor on ABC. She's amazing. And her husband is equally as amazing. You'll find out their love story in a little bit, but we we had a lot of fun, didn't we? Oh my gosh, this is one of the best interviews ever. Yeah. I love talking with them. They give you just such positive energy. And I have to say, at the end of the interview, they drop this tidbit that they've never shared with anybody. Yeah. And it's something that went down the night before their wedding. Yes, we're very happy they got married after this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it kind of blew my mind. And, and listen, they're, they really are like this amazing couple. They're perfect for each other. But I th- I've always said there's a really big difference between being a perfect couple and being perfect for each other. Right. Things happen. You argue, like, because we, we get this a lot. Like, oh, but you guys never argue. Like, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so we're going to fight about that after the podcast. No. So it's like, I think that they are literally perfect for each other, but it doesn't mean every moment's perfect. Yeah. And I think that that's, it seriously, like it's going to make you uh, feel really good about like things that have happened in your relationship and yeah. kind of like normalize. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I love it. I just, I love that tidbit that they shared with us. Normalize fighting. <laughs> well, that, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Everything's just fine. Just kidding. Now listen, Val Warner in particular with her work husband, Ryan Severini, they have been a huge part of Kenzie and Roman's career. I mean, yes. honestly, uh, our first look uh, TV-wise was on Winnie City Live because Ryan and Val welcomed us with open arms and they had us on their show over and over and over again. And then their executive producer, Justina, loved us so much that she actually invited us to do the New Year's Eve special mm-hmm. with Ryan and Val on ABC. They have been really, really crucial to forming our brand, helping our brand, and we have nothing but love for Val and Ryan. And I just, I want to shout out Val uh, because because especially women in this industry, you can go one of two routes. You can actually be a woman who lifts another one up, or you can be more nervous. Like, I don't want another woman to win. Maybe that's my spot. Like, mm-hmm. that, that does happen a lot in it this It happened industry. to you, actually, very recently. Like, uh, you're at a different job because of that. Yes, basically. <laughs> so, um, But this podcast ain't about negativity. No. It's about the positive women. So, Val, I just want to say, is so amazing. And she can, like, give credit where it's due and not yeah. be worried. She's so confident in herself. Yeah. She's not worried about those things, one. But then, two, can really see what somebody else thrives in and enjoy that or want to learn from that like she'll reach out to me and be like I gotta get better at TikTok like we can make jokes about it and I just have to say I think she's an amazing woman and really she's a girl's girl which doesn't happen a lot she's been a bit of a mentor to you she has been yeah thousand percent I, I feel lucky to know her I feel lucky to have learned from her mm-hmm. and I actually like feel even lucky enough that I get to call her a friend not just a mentor which is awesome and you're gonna find out in this podcast in our interview with them is that we have a lot of parallels with their relationship yeah uh, obviously marriage uh blended family yes uh, yeah. media a lot of things are parallel with them no it's it's it was a, a really cool connection I actually didn't realize the level and the amount we had in common with yeah. them yeah a- until this interview it had us cracking up both beautiful Beautiful. Both beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So before we get into the actual interview with Val Warner and her husband, Jabba, um, one thing we all share in common with uh, Val and Ryan and everything is uh, New Year's Eve. So this past New Year's Eve, we did their Countdown Chicago special for the third year in a row. Woo. By the way, all of us have won. Uh, well, actually, we have only won two Emmys. They've won more, I believe. But, They've won more. They've been doing but it longer. the show is really, really good on New Year's Eve every single year on ABC7 Chicago. And uh, something really funny happened this past New Year's Eve, which we have not talked about yet. No. But if you watched our segment, uh, our second segment on the <laughs> New Year's Eve special, I was doing a shot for every time the dancing Bushas uh, said the word baby during Kenzie's baby shower live on TV. They insisted, the Dancing Bushes insisted on giving me this little baby shower full of all these like Polish traditions and fun things. So this was like the thing that they wanted to roll with. 
And so you had to take a lot of shots. Yeah. So every time they said baby during a baby shower live on TV, I had to take a shot. Okay. Now we kind of did a little pre-meeting before the live hit on New Year's Eve. And there was one Busha in particular that was going to be like the spokesperson. Right. Because there's so many of them. It's like, okay, we can't mic up 15 grandmas here. It would be crazy. So who wants to kind of be the lead of the segment? Yes. So this one woman was like, it's me. I'm the one. All right, cool. So we go live and everything's going perfectly to plan and uh we do a shot and then this busha for some reason took a shot as well she was like ready to kick off the party so right before we started breaking down like what they got me for the baby shower she took a shot with roman yes so now i have the microphone it's going to be handheld to her mouth so i'm talking to her i'm asking her questions and she froze like she's not answering any of the questions live on tv i'm thinking oh my gosh she's got stage fright and so like i had to move on eventually to a different busha to kind of be the spokesperson right and i'm trying to fill i'm like so what is this is this a pierogi like i'm trying to fill in this dead air yeah we're pros so i think it went off pretty well but it was a big deal in the moment like i was like what are we gonna do like this woman's not speaking she froze right Right. so whatever the whole night was amazing the show was amazing we didn't watch it till we got back home like probably like two three in the morning and watched it back when this busha the spokesperson took a shot she like choked. She was you know choking. When you, okay, you know when you swallow something it goes down like the wrong pipe, like water? <laughs> That's obviously what happened to her because she kept coughing and looking away and she wouldn't talk. But at the moment we didn't realize this. So we just had this dancing boosha choking on air and no one not helping her. I was so mad in the moment because I'm like, oh, she froze. But now I'm like, I'm thankful she didn't pass away and choke to death. Oh my God. Could you imagine if she like fainted from oh, lack of man. air? Like, we had no idea. Well, I'm glad she's okay. She's okay. And I'm not mad anymore because now I realize what happened. But anyway. It was so bad for her, too. Oh, I really did. <laughs> but Val Warner is a major reason why we are even part of that New Year's Eve special. Absolutely. So without further ado, our first ever interview on the Romance Podcast, it's the amazing Val Warner from ABC7 Chicago and her equally as amazing husband, Jabba. Man, Thank you, guys. Hey, Justin. Hey, Kinsey. <laughs> we are doing good. You guys are officially the first guests on the Romance Podcast. So thank you very much. How did we get so lucky? Right. How did we get so lucky? Are you kidding us? We're so excited. (laughs) Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. Here's the deal. The first question we're always going to ask our guests, and because we think it's fascinating, is how did you guys meet? So please tell us the story of how Val and Jabba met. You want me to do it? Okay. Oh, Lord. Okay. (laughs) I'm going to try to make this uh, quick. But back in 2015, I was at a concert. And I was on the side of the stage during the concert and I'm looking in the crowd and I see Val in the front. I don't know who she is or nothing. And I'm just a fix to her. And she's just having a good time in the front row. I tell my little brother, hey, could you please go down through the front row and grab her and her buddies and tell them to come on backstage for some drinks. Oh. So he scooted down through the front row and... And I could see her lips. Her, I read her lips and she said, no, thank you. And so one of my other buddies was like, man, Jabba, you know who that is? And I was like, no. He said, man, that's a Val Warner from uh, Channel 9. And I was like, oh, OK, this was in 2015. So then I was like, OK, and that was it. You know, the concert went on. And that was it. So two years later um, at my office, two years later, you guys, two years. Wow. <laughs> two years later, uh, I work over at St. Sabina. And they had an outside concert with Chance the Rapper, Jennifer Hudson, Will I Am. And so I'm standing outside, there's people everywhere, and I see this sprinter pull up, security get out, open up the door, and there she go again. Oh. <laughs> and I was with one of my coworkers named John, and I was like, John, I was like, look, he was like, what? I said, man, old girl. He was like, who Val? I said, yes. I said, that's gonna be my girl. Oh. He called me a damn fool. <laughs> Call me a damn fool. He said, man, you you a damn fool. And I didn't say nothing else. Another year passes, 2018. And I just so happened to go check on my mom. And I leave my office. I go to Harvey, go to my mom's house. And my mom is watching Windy City Live. (laughs) I said, I love her. Wow. And she was like, who, Val? She, She said it like she knew her. I'm like... Yeah. She's like, oh, that's my girl. I'm like, in real life? She's like, no, you know, I watch her every day, her and Ryan. And so my mother took that to heart. And then one thing led to another. 
Uh, my little brother, my mother, my little brother connected, knew somebody that worked uh, for the show, one of the producers, and got us tickets to go to the show. And, and well, I, that's no, because you got to keep going then. Okay. Because all right, so then it was your birthday. So right. he was an audio person. You're right. So let me go back. All right, so <laughs> 2018, I had a birthday. Okay. Okay. After my birthday, I see her on TV, and so I well, they surprised you with tickets for the show. Yeah, for the show because that I told you, yeah, they surprised they surprised me tickets to go to the show for my you know for my birthday. So that was my gift was to come and see her for my birthday from my mother. Aww. She don't even know who no. I am yeah. at all. You're in love and ready to get married, and she doesn't know your life. Like that's where you're at. Technically, I was still in a situation. Gotcha. Oh. Okay. Okay. And so we go to the show, and I'm sitting front row, and Snoop Dogg was on the show, and I'm looking, and she walk across the stage just before anybody even came in, and. I was in a trance <laughs> and then I see why. And I was like, this is for real. After the show was over with, one of the producers tell us to stay. We want to take pictures with Snoop Dogg and, and Ryan and Val. And so we stayed. So my mother, my mother says, she said, hey, Val, girl, I watch you every day. But today I ain't come to see you. I came to see Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> but my son, he came to see you today. And she gave me a little half, a little hug. It wasn't even a real hug. It was like a little half hug. We took a picture, and I felt great about that. I was like, "Hey, I'm cool." Yeah, because I think he was an audience member. Right. I was I'm like, just, "Oh, happy you know, birthday!" Right. Like, Take pictures with everybody. It was just like meeting, you know, meeting your dream girl. And I met her, and we took a picture, and that was it. Right. So when we left, uh, we went down to the Scout. It's uh it was a little bar in the uh, South Loop called the Scout. So me, my mother, my little brother go there. You know, after the show, we go eat. And so I throw on the Instagram. First of all, when I was at the show, I put Val Warner is fine as hell. <laughs> <laughs> on my Insta story, you know, like. Because he wasn't following me before I, that day. I wasn't following her. So I followed her that day and, and I put on my story, added my Insta it. story. I added her. I was like, Val Warner is fine as hell. <laughs> Fire emojis all over, right? And so that was it. So then we leave the show. We go get something to eat. So then I put on my Insta story, you know, my family taking me out. We finna have a good time for my birthday. You know, my mother took me to go see my dream girl for my birthday. You know, I was all in the awe. And then I posted that. Just get to the part where. Where what? Where you say, I slid into your DM. Yes. So he said. After all this was over with, I get home. I go up to my, to my spot. I sit down. I look at my phone. I'm just on the cloud now. I got a DM. (laughs) <laughs> it's a DM from her. Whoa. Val. This is his version. I did. <laughs> it took me at least two minutes to open it up. But then I opened it up because I was like, this can't be true. And it was true. It was her. And she was like, oh, oh, I didn't know it was your birthday. Happy birthday. And I was like, yeah, my birthday present was for me to come and see you for my birthday. That was my gift from my mother and my little brother. She was like, oh, how sweet. Very cordial. She was very cordial. Yeah. Right. So then every other day she'll post something and I'll just throw some heart emojis in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I throw some heart emojis in there. I was being persistent on the heart emojis, man. You never know what a heart emoji, emoji can do. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. yeah, right? Then one day she comes to me and say, I mean, not come to me, but in my DM, she says, do your wife or your girlfriend know that you sending me all these heart emojis. That was my way to try to test to see what his relationship status was. I was going to say, Val, that was very clever. Like, I, I, I like what you just did there. And also know if he's a piece of crap and he actually sends you messages when he's got a girlfriend. Hey, I felt so small. I'm like, dang. So at the time, you know, I was super single. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I said, well, I came back and I said, well, if I had a wife or a girlfriend, I wouldn't even be entertaining you. I wouldn't even be entertaining you. <gasps> Then I came right back and said, you know, I apologize if I overstepped my boundaries or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, oh, you know, everything is all right. And then, you know, one thing led to another. Yeah. That's where the story stops. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It was just getting juicy. I know. Real juicy. And uh, let's just say 
Oh, yeah, that's, we'll tell y'all that when we go to Harry Carey's. We'll tell you that story. This is, <laughs> but just know that's how it started. And then it slowly, slowly progressed. Slowly progressed. This was, yes. no, this was nothing fast. It was really, think about how you felt in high school when you had like that first little crush or like you liked the boy, he liked mm-hmm. you. It was kind of super giddy. That's how it felt for me. And you me know, too. yeah, like I, we felt, I, I felt like like a lame. I didn't know what to say, what to do. I was, I was totally like, I've ne- I act like I've never been in a relationship before. I'm like, I don't know what to say. And I'm, he's rarely at a loss for work. Right. I was. Um, we, we got that vibe. We got that. You know. <laughs> let, let me ask a question though, because Jabba, you and I are on the same page of like you knew instantly about Val. I knew instantly about Kenzie. So Val, what was the moment that went from like him being uh, a, a Windy City Live audience member, somebody you were kind of casually talking to on a DM, to like, this could be something. I like this guy. You know what? He piqued my curiosity from his Instagram page. He is right. Like, he would send me hearts. And, you know, I get a lot of traffic on my DM, right? You know, from the flirting to the just the innocent stuff, all of that, right? But I don't know what it was about his hearts, Again, like back then it was like, now everybody knows I'm off the market, so it's not like that. But back then it was like, why did I go through his page? I actually went to his page and started like scrolling. And I found myself like checking his page every day because he had this really contagious personality that I picked up off the page. I was like, right. seems like a lot of fun, right? So I would do that. And then um, our mutual friend who got him the tickets to the show, knew him, knew his brother, and then knew him. So then I started asking her questions, and uh, I was like, "What? what is his story? Like, what's the deal? Like, he's piqued my curiosity. And, you know, I was in, I mean, the whole world knew. I mean, I don't really talk about this. This is kind of weird, and I don't know if we got this out later. But, um, you know, I was in a very long-term relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. I had been engaged for almost seven years and nothing had happened. Right. And so here I found myself in this position. To be honest, our first episode, we talk about our story. And when I met Kenzie, she was in a relationship as well. So the the, the (laughs) parallels between us and you guys are actually very similar. That's why I'm asking these questions. It was so funny because he always said like, um, you didn't cheat, but I really wish you would have. That's what he said the whole time. <laughs> right. And so, get it, girl. <laughs> it's, it's super, like, um, sensitive. It's not something that we really, really talk about, but it did happen. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Was, and there was, uh, my ex was a nice guy, right? But obviously there was something that was preventing, you know, the mm-hmm. the to the altar, right? Or the walk to the altar. Um, so anyway, to make a long story short, I started expressing interest and curiosity just based off of like this page, like, is this guy really this way in real life? So my neighbor had a get together. Um, he was there. I went over there and I saw him and I was like, wow. And then you could tell now that I know him, he was nervous out the gate. Like when I first got in there, he was quiet, which is not like him. But before long, his personality popped that night. And I was like, Okay, so then I left and he thought I left because I didn't like him. But why I left is because I had to make sure like it was like a Sunday night to make sure my kids were in the bed for school and keep my same normal routine. And I told my neighbor, I was like, I called back soon as I left. I was like, do not let him leave. Just do whatever you do. Just tell him, like, I'm coming back. Like, just say, don't leave, don't leave. So I ended up coming back. Oh. That's kind of the, be- the beginning of the end. When she said that she had to go when I first when I first officially met her, you know how a man ego is. So I thought that, you know, maybe, you know, she really got a chance to see me in person and I wasn't who she thought I would. Yeah. You know, who she visioned to be. And so that, that was my ego. I'm like, damn. So then she left. So I thought, you know, she was making up this excuse. But let me tell you, to this day, I always think about that. When she said that she had to go and make sure her kids were straight. That's no joke. Her kids, man, Max and Zoe is, uh, man, and now I get it, you know. But but my ego was like, nah. So then when she left, then the phone rang again. So a, a mutual friend picks the phone up. And this is exactly what she said. She said, yeah, girl. Yeah, they still here. Okay, bye-bye. All right. 
Now, that quick little conversation in my mind, I'm thinking, girl, I'm going to call you back when they leave. So, you know what I'm saying? I can tell you what's really going on. I'm thinking it's some old girl juicy stuff. <laughs> and uh, she turned around and said, Jabba, Val said, don't leave. She'll be right back. Oh, awesome. I felt like Superman. Oh, Michael Jordan. <laughs> and I felt like the greatest people on earth. I was like, oh, yeah. And she came back, man, and just, it seemed like I was starting over in my life with relationships. Like, I didn't know how to even talk. I'm like, I don't want to sound like a lame. You know, I, I was thinking in my mind how to be perfect, but I know I'm not. And I'm like, okay, I just got to be Java. And I said, you know, I, I'm not about to try to be somebody that I'm not. You know, that way, if, if this happened to be what we think it, what I would hope and dream it would have been, then I'm in a good space because... I can be Jabba forever. I ain't got to worry about being somebody else and then turn back into Jabba. And then she looked at me crazy like, well, you wasn't acting like this in the beginning. Right. Exactly. Right. I mean, what a, what a great story. I will say we've known Val for a very long time and she always raved about you. And we recently met you for the first time a few months ago at that uh, Jackson Chan's ping pong tournament. Right. And I mean, I'll tell you what, like we didn't get to talk to you that much then, but just these past 10 minutes of you explaining your love for Val from the very beginning how can you not understand what Val was talking about? You are a great, great guy. And it's been very, very heartwarming for us to hear that story. From day one, you were into this woman. It's awesome to hear that, isn't it? It's cool. I, lo I love the persistence. And Val, you're like, oh, what's different about his hearts, right? I feel like girls can tell when there's that genuine persistence. And like, we love consistency because it shows real like someone you can rely on like all those things start to relay and it's like yeah. a guy you can lie uh, rely on and is consistent with you and then like that starts like a little attraction like you've cared about me for a long time like yeah. that's a nice thing to see so i totally understand that it is i remember one time um saying on the show and I, I didn't get this from anywhere i think this actually came from me but the thing about java is i love presence more than presence. So him being there versus him buying me things or him, you know, a lot of in this day and age, you know, we just came off the heels of Valentine's day where everybody was posting what such and such bought for them and what they did for them. But the fact that he's here and there, and when I say here and there, if I had the, you know, recently I left town to go see Zoe, he held down the fort and made sure Max was at school, you know, boo, track me, all this kind of stuff. He's very involved, not just with me. And as he mentioned, like everybody in Chicago knows, my heart where my heart is and that's with my kids obviously he has a new place in my heart too and i made room for him but before mm -hmm. him, it was me and my kids and that's it yeah. so there there are my priority um and, 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 and he yeah. allows me to be you know what i mean like when i say hey i want to go be surprise zoe for valentine's day he didn't trip that like oh no you're supposed to be with me because right. it's you know, valentine's day he understood you know for some reason she must feel she needs to be with her daughter who's impressionable at an age where she thinks this holiday is supposed to be all about this and i needed to show her that guess what I've always been Valentine to you. I'm never going to stop being Valentine to you. And you have a mother who has a guy in her life who allows you to still allows me to still be me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. And this is one thing that I preach to myself is that Callie and the kids are my responsibility in this house and outside this house. And so and with responsibility comes with change actually comes responsibility. And so like, did I have to change some things up? Yeah, I can't go hanging out with my frat brothers every night and we on party buses with strippers and all that old craziness. I can't do that because you know, they're my responsibility and I had to change. And I'm also a reflection of this family. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, you know, when I go out in the public, I'm not just going out in the public uh, and being reckless or being selfish, you know, going out just doing all types of crazy things. Cause I know the weight of this family sometimes be on my shoulder. And also my, my mother, my stepdad, my brothers, I got a big family, you know, so it ain't like I can go out here and just be doing wild stuff. It's not even in my heart really, but it's not you anyway. yeah, it's not me anyway, but I know like I, I have to really think when I leave outside these doors, you know what I'm saying? I have to really think and I have to have, you, have I mean, to have, you can't drive crazy because you have to come home to us. Cause I think he can't drive. So I'm always I telling him. <laughs> Sensibly, because if something happened to you, what would we do? Like, right. you know, drive crazy, not like that. 
Another parallel that we have, your couple and our couple here, is that uh, Val, you had kids before this relationship. I have a, a child before me and Kenzie got together. And I know I had my rules of six months. Like Kenzie didn't get to meet Tristan until six months. So my, my son was younger though, Val. So you having a bit older kids, what was your um, rule with Jabba and how did the kids come into play for that relationship? Oh, it was some months too. Like I didn't bring him yeah. around them for. And I don't even months. think it was a rule, babe. It was like, and I understood this. I understand. I don't mean to cut your science, babe, but I, this is this is what I actually really do love about it. One thing, I wasn't putting no pressure on her. You know, I understood the situation ship that she was in. Uh, I didn't wasn't boggling down on her like, man, when are you going to do this? So it was never none of that. It was yeah. everything flowed. It was nothing. Uh, I didn't overstep no type of boundaries or nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. I remember me and my mother had a conversation and my mother was like, have you met the kids yet? And I was like, no. And I said, I'm nervous because I knew after our conversations and everything, how important the kids is to her and, you know, her decision making. And mm-hmm. I knew that if I didn't get past the kids, it won't, this wouldn't be no relationship. Mm-hmm. I didn't meet the kids for a long time, what I tell you. But And I was super nervous to meet the kids. And it got to a point where I was like, oh, Lord. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> pass. So my mother said, Zoe going to be easy. You're going to be cool with Zoe. She said, it's, it's Max. You ain't going to get past Max. And I felt like Max was my he was my boy. It was just the opposite. It was the total opposite. Wow. It was, it was and so it wasn't hard though. Don't get me Zoe wrong. It wasn't either. But I was, well, let me say my thought process. So while he thought it was Max was going to be the one, I was like, oh my God, how was Zoe going to be? Because Max was younger. They weren't as young as Tristan, but let me think. Five minus. They were like 11. Max was like 11 and Zoe was like 16, 17. Right. 11, 12, 16, 17. Mm-hmm. So, but my thing was like, Zoe is the one that I'm like, I was scared of, right? I'm like, how is she wow. going to take this or receive this? And Max, I never worried about. Max is super easy going. Not that Zoe isn't, but Zoe's a girl and she was older and she's a little wiser and a little more. Max is kind of just, you know, into his world, into his video games, you know, you feed him, he, he's fine. So I never <laughs> thought he was going to be that kid, but I was where, and, and Zoe didn't get, like, she was like, when she first met, she goes, oh, you're tall. And then he has tattoos. She was like, oh, you have tattoos. So they struck it up <laughs> talking about tattoos and whatnot. Like he said, that was super important because it wasn't quite six months, I think. Justin, I think it was probably more like three or four for me mm-hmm. because I didn't want to start falling for him more without like having him meet my kids. Because right. let's just say I waited six months. I'm totally in love. Then he meets the kids and they hate him. They're like, how do I stop that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, my God, I got to like finesse this. And it was one of those things where it was just one night where I knew like, this is the night. Yeah. Yeah. And we started with Zoe. We started, I was like, let's just have you meet her. Let's just have you meet her. Let's just see how it goes. But Zoe, because again, she was older, started noticing my happiness. Oh yeah. So I'm always a happy person, but Zoe kind of started noticing a little bit of change in my pattern, a little bit of change in my mood, you know, like on a random night, I'd be like, Oh, you know, I'm going to go meet my girlfriend. And she was like, Mm, she knew. Girlfriend. <laughs> go out and meet a girlfriend on a Tuesday night. Like, right. Yeah. She was like, she peeped game right away. She was like, you're going to go meet your girlfriend. She was like, okay, sis. So <laughs> relationship. And I started laughing because I'm really trying to contain this super giddy, joyous, happy me because I got to stay like the same to not let anybody know that I'm like mm-hmm. over the hill crazy about this guy, right? So I'm like, no, you know, I'm just going to go meet a girlfriend real quick. She was like, okay, what's girlfriend's name? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like she was going to her senior year high school. She's not stupid. <laughs> 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 and so, uh, yeah, that was early on. And then, yeah, that's how we started with her. Then Max was, Max was easy. It wasn't even any anything. Like one day, he helped, like, I had something outside. He, like, helped bring some stuff in. I was like, oh, this is my friend, Java. He's helping me. He's like, hey, how are you? And just went back up to his room and then just 
gradually went in there. By the way, Justin lied because he said, oh, I have this six month rule. We started dating in April and I met Tristan in July. So we may have had a rule, but it started to progress. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, it's at all. Real yeah. strict on the rules. I also I also met her in February. So if we do the math, February well, you to met July. Me and, and I was in a relationship. Right. So it doesn't count. But anyway. But, <laughs> but, but Val, I, I like what you said about that. My reason for the six months was it wasn't so much about, I knew Kenzie was the one, but I wanted to make sure that she thought the same about me before I introduced Tristan. Because right. if I was like with her for a couple months and she bounced, my son has met a woman now for the first time and she's gone. So I want to make sure that you were- Ironically though, as weird as it was, him waiting so long started to, I thought he was full of it yeah. because he was like, I want to get married. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm like, I don't know where you live. <laughs> I haven't met your child. I, you're full of shit. You see me on Saturdays. Like, you're just trying to hook up with me on the weekend. So I started to take him less serious. And I'm like, you're not my husband. You don't even, I, you don't want me at your house or around your kid. You're not my husband. So ironically, he was trying to make sure I was serious. But what he was doing was making me feel like he was full of it. And so I started to become super detached. And he's like, what's your problem? And I'm like, you're full of it. You just want to date me on the weekends. Just say that. And it was so, so funny. It caused all this. As you're getting a nice little taste of our uh, relationship dynamic, we fight a little bit here and there. You guys yes. seem like you're perfect. Are there fights that happen? And, and how do you guys resolve those fights? Because right now, about 20 minutes deep in this podcast, you guys seem like the perfect couple and everything is just perfect. Far from perfect. Ask Max. Max what? is Record Max records. We call them passionate debates. Passionate debates. Okay. But one thing that I've learned is I know she's a female, and I know that we're not equally yoked. And you know what I'm saying? I know people say, Oh, we got this in common, we got that in common, but we I'm still a man and she's a woman. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, we we different, like different upbringings. I grew up with two brothers in one bedroom and everything was aggressive, you know, and all that stuff. So sometimes my delivery may be coming off aggressive, but that's because uh, I normalize things as a child. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I always say that, you know, a uh, couple's therapy is like the is the shit. But I will break the ice, like right or wrong. Oh, her face, oh. her face is different. She just started. She just started trying to break the ice a little bit, but we both can get stubborn at times. Yes, we both, and I would say I do. I'm guilty, but we don't let it. We don't let it like linger. We don't let that it linger that like part that. is true. So to answer your linger. question, are we perfect? Hell uh, no, we are far from perfect. Um, number two, when we do have spats. They typically don't last long. However, we have had some really, really, really big ones. As a matter of fact, we will tell you this, which we don't talk about and nobody knows that was at our wedding. The night before our wedding, we had the, the biggest, biggest ever. fight ever. I know that the guy next to us, uh, Draper, I know Draper heard us. It was like so a guest at our wedding. I was so was drunk. I hope he didn't. But when I say it was ugly and he said to me, you ain't got to marry me. So I did not think that we were going to make it to the aisle the next day. Hell no. Yeah, we was, and so, you know, that night we were supposed to see each other. We were supposed to be a separate from each right. other. And then we got into that big argument. And I told myself, if I leave this room, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he stay, actually stayed in the bed. And I was thinking, I rolled over with my back to him. I'm like, why is he even here? We just had this big ass fight. I just want like, to touch him. You were just, supposed to be here, but I'm like, I'm but I got up even. early that next morning. I, so check this out. I get up early the next morning. I was hurt. I was. It I, was a bad one. I, it was, was a bad one. I was hurt. And I was like, I just prayed. I said, I just want this day to be perfect. I'm going to marry her. Yeah. yeah. I went to breakfast and I saw her. As soon as I saw her a little bit, she was way on the other side. I ate and then I went to one of my guys' uh, hotel to his room and I wrote a poem. I sat in there and wrote a poem that I, and I wrote it that day. And I said the poem during the wedding. I wrote it beforehand. Mm -mm. California Dream? California Dream I started working on, but the vowels Oh, the vows. Yeah. Oh, so you want to talk about, well, I, wrote, I wrote my vows that morning, too. Yeah. I, wow. Right after the blowout. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, we, okay, we're procrastinators. Uh, well, I am more so than him. He's actually not a procrastinator, so I didn't know that he didn't write his vows. But I did write my vows that morning after the blowout. That had to be tough. Yeah, well, you know what? He also texted me that morning. 
I think you texted me first. Mm -hmm. And then he texted, that's what it was. He sent me a very long text, which was very sweet. And I called him. Okay. So this goes back to the point of like how he will break the ice because I can kind of hold on to it. When he sent that for me, I was like bawling because this fight was so bad. that I literally was like, oh my God, how am I going to tell all these people that this just has to be a party? Let me just put this as a disclaimer. I'm talking shit. We arguing. Oof. I'm in my Richard Pryor voice. Uh-huh. Well, fuck it then. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, they can go home. I don't care. <laughs> you know, we just go party, whatever this was. You know, I was in my Richard Pryor voice all day, right? But deep, deep, deep down inside, mm-hmm. in that little bitty door inside the heart, I was going to get married. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, to me, that pushed my love for her over the top. Like, over the top. And I told myself that, you know, no matter what, people together, we're not perfect. We express ourselves, we communicate, we're very transparent. And one thing is, I like how we bounce back. I see a lot of my friends don't bounce back. You know, they don't bounce back and they, they take some of that stuff to heart. And I just try to explain to them, y'all, it's an argument. So you say things in the heat of the moment. We understand that, you know what I'm saying? And but I but one thing that I told her that I wasn't going to ever put my hands on her. Mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna ever call out her name. It's not one time we had a, a argument, and our arguments don't be loud. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that was loud. I'm talking about. Yeah, but we had a couple, early on, we had a couple really loud ones, like the time I dumped all your stuff out. <laughs> that funny as hell. What? Yeah. Look, we, I don't know what it was about. I can't even remember either. But, but I jumped all of I, I ran down the bed. In the bed. She threw all I she put out all dresses. I had a pile of clothes in the middle. But guess what? I didn't budge. Yeah. I'm looking at her. I and got that up. made it worse. <laughs> that pissed her off. Look, I got up. Let me tell you what I did. I sift through the pile. I grabbed some jogger pants, threw it over my shoulder, a sweatshirt, some socks. And he and left. A couple pair of drawers, and I left. <laughs> oh, man. Good Lord. But I love this because I think some people think you have to be in this fairy tale and you can't ever have a dispute. Like, that literally made me feel better because we've gotten, we haven't had our wedding yet, but we've gotten in spats about our wedding. And I'm like, oh my God, did that make us horrible? Like, shouldn't everything be a fairy tale? You know, that's good to know. Let me tell you this the tension mm-hmm. and Stress of the wedding alone. Right. You know what I'm saying it's just like during COVID. People saying, "Man, if you can survive with your spouse or your girl during COVID, you winning." So you, you have to look at it like that. Like, okay, we finna get married. We know these stresses is coming because you know mm-hmm. what? I'm gonna get her all the props because I'm not a flower guy. I'm not about to be picking out the pieces to a chair for the wedding and all that shit. I'm not, that's not me. Same. She wanted me to be involved. So I would sit in these rooms and she'd be on the phone, on FaceTime with all these people and they talking about, how this little girl? Okay, well what about this color? They saying colors I've never fucking heard of before. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like this. I'm like, Right. I'm doing my thing and she said, Baby, you like this? I look, yeah, that's nice. All I was like to say was just say yes. Just yep. say yes. Yeah. <laughs> just say yes and let it go have it, you know. And so, but you know, if you can get past that, man, just know that the, the pressure and the stresses, don't let it put you in the funk, man. Just know that one of my good friends named Mark Davis, oh. NBA referee, he called me a day before my wedding. Mm-hmm. I wish you'd have told me this months before, but he called me the day before my I went and said, hey, Jabba, how you feel? I said, man, I feel good. He was like, look, I know it's a lot of people pulling y'all this way, this way. Y'all got all this and all the flowers and all that. He said, man, he said, forget about all that. He said, just make sure that you married August 1st. Mm-hmm. We got married July 31st. He said, just make sure you guys is married August 1st. Yes. And you have to think about that. He was like, out of all that, make sure that if, y'all... Yeah, we just go through it. That you go through it. No matter yeah. what it is, just go through it. Because as long as you get married, that's the most important thing. We ain't right. 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 That's why you're there. That is why you're there. It is the purpose. Everything else is just, hey, it's for the Lord. Right. Because there's something that's going to go wrong. Right. right. And you just have to kind of like not let it bother the you. The perfect thing was, to me, 
was when I saw her walk down the aisle. I, that, I didn't see nothing else. So no matter all the energy that we put in flowers and bouquets and all that shit, the beautiful thing was her coming down that aisle. She was stunning. I saw that. I'm like, oh my God, she was stunning. I would have married her. I'm like, shit, she looks good. <laughs> she looks good. <laughs> Yo, all my frat brothers, they were like, damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> and Java, so I can relate to coming into a picture and it can be hard because you coming into an already decided family dynamic yeah. and finding a place where you fit and becoming a parent that w- didn't previously exist. It is a challenge. And I felt the same as you, Java, like I'm not coming in and you're the parent and I'm kind of an extra. I'm a be a parent. Like that's it. Like, and I make sure there's certain things that get done because I never want him to go, well, cause we're, you know, we're going to have kids and I never want Tristan to go, well, you're doing that for your kids. I know you never did that for, I don't ever want him to grow up. He's young enough to see that. So I take special time out of traditions that I know I want, you know, for the kids that I'm going to raise yeah. and make sure I'm starting them now. And I had to like switch that. But what was some of the hard parts for you guys blending your family and figuring that dynamic out? Because you can love the, I love Tristan. It doesn't always make it, you know, easy to become a parent. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's hard to make the other parent accept that you are one now and respect that I'm in this family and I'm here, you know? Answer that for him. Okay. Because, and this is my admission, I am very um, protective and very um, defensive about how I've raised my kids, right? So John Mm -hmm. comes in here and he said it earlier, if you were listening, we come from two different backgrounds. We were raised differently. So the way he sees things is not the way I see things, especially when it comes to kids. He is definitely more old school parenting. I Mm -hmm. tend to be more new school parenting and for him to come in here and tell me the things that I'm not doing or doing wrong with the kids was like this in the beginning. And I was fighting and resisting and did not welcome that opinion. I had to slowly realize that he's the lens into this house that has been missing for a long time because all I see is my way. Right. So now I have somebody coming in here going, wait a minute, they don't do this. They don't do that. Like what, how are you, how is that going to benefit them? And so once I start to let my guard down, he's been beneficial to me, actually making them even better human beings, more responsible human beings. Um, you know, but doing it with a place of love because, you know, until this day, I also knew that that she was doing this by yourself. Like you have to understand she's not the regular house mom, Mm -hmm. her lifestyle, her, her career is very demanding. You know what I'm saying? She had to put a smile on her face, even when she don't want to. So, mm-hmm. you know, and then still, you know, missing out on a lot of stuff. So you have to leave work, go to this game, you know, she, and the kids is involved heavily in uh, extracurricular activities at school. So she's that super soccer mom and she's doing it by herself. So a lot of the stuff, that she would just ain't really paying attention to because she just trying to make sure that these kids have whatever they need, you know. And so now here I come in on the back end and I didn't come in here putting my foot down and they gotta do this. Well, I wouldn't let them. Yeah, you, you know, and it, <laughs> it's a process, you know. I'm like, you have to fit into our yeah. lives. And then but I also but have I to, slowed that down. Yeah, but I I have to let her know that I'm not here to mess up the house. I'm here to enhance the house. And at the end of the day, as parents, because we're not going to be here for a long time. And so we want to make sure that if we're not here, that these kids is going to be equipped with all the necessary tools that they're going to need to be able to do what they need to do moving forward as adults. And if we don't give them that, that oil early, then we, we, we doing them a, a, a we doing them a disservice. And so, and, and so like, you know, Max is a young man. And, you know, at the end of the day, let's be real frank or honest. A woman, yeah, they can raise it and nurture a young man. But a man, it's going to take a man to really raise a, a young man because and they're just that's just how it is. I work in that field and I see, you know, I see the effects of it, you know, and, not, and it's no bad slap on single moms. I feel bad for single moms because. You know, it's so much on the plate trying to provide, trying to do all this stuff, and they're doing it by themselves without the guidance and the help of a man. So, you know, I just want to, you know, and at the end of the day, it can be tough love, but it's it's the best love. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And me and my relationship with Max, man, 
man, I feel like I got another son that I, you know, that I'm in a house with every day and mm-hmm. I can see his growth. You know, I just seen him from a big, you know, this boy got muscles bigger than me now, you know? <laughs> I'm like, damn. I bet he's faster than you. I bet he's faster. Yes. At first, he was talking that trash, and I was like, okay. Now, he would say, welcome to the smoke show. (laughs) (laughs) Well, honestly, I love you guys, the family dynamic you guys have created. And Val, everything you ever bragged about when it comes to Java, we we have confirmed that it is true. Because this man, I think you definitely found a gem of a man. And and Java, you already know, you found a gem of a woman. The world knows that. Like, everybody who watches ABC is like, damn. So now we know Java's also phenomenal. I I can't think of a better first couple for our podcast than you two. Because you guys... Uh, I don't want to say mentors, but like idols of ours. Like you, totally. I love what you guys have, and I, I think we could strive to be that. That's, that's really cool to watch you guys. Have it. Shine. That's yeah. the thing about it. You guys yeah, already have it. Really and do. y'all have, y'all don't even know your influence in our relationship. So yeah. that's just how it, you know, goes. We won't get into that part. But <laughs> you, know, just, you guys are goals for so many people. So I just think oh, this is just like, like a big love affair. Yeah. And it's like we're we're in two different age demographics you know what i mean like yeah. the fact that job and i get a second chance at this kind of true love at this age at this age is really like something else because we, we got friends that's 40s 50s, 50s yeah and we talk to them all the time they straight single i'm talking about yeah, some yeah. Old kids and, and it's not like my girlfriends who are fun. my age or older they're like it's just no good guys out here so yeah, the dating scene nowadays you guys Oh, I feel sorry for people that's not in a relationship and that's out here dating, going to clubs, trying to find that woman. And then, you know, you have all these insecurities. You have all these guards up. You have all these uh, traumas. Yeah, all these traumas. And 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 we've had that, too. So, like, when you yeah, back to the whole conversation of, you know, you guys seem perfect. Like, I may seem perfect on ABC7 and Windy City Live, but I have my own insecurities and traumas from past relationships that Jabba has come in and he's like, whoa, that's not me. That's not me. Like, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to hurt you. But it may be something that triggers me and then yes. I take it out on him when it's not even him. You know what I mean? So the fact that yeah, that's he all is... Right. Yeah, one time, well, we don't need to get into all that. No, one, uh, the point it. is, he is very patient with me and... You know, I think, you know, when you talk about being vulnerable and us being your first guest and giving people an inside look that they may not get on our Instagram or TV or whatever, is that I deal with certain triggers, right? And those traumas and those triggers show up even at this stage in my life with him. And I'm just grateful to have somebody that doesn't want to run when he sees me, you know, like flipping out. Who do I blame it on? We're not gonna say that. So look, when she when she have these little things, let me tell y'all this. I'm a real man. You know what I told her one time? She went off and going off, and I'm just sitting there looking. I said, "Baby, you know what? I ain't even mad at you. I ain't even upset at you at all. I blame, I blame your, your last, my past. I blame the last guys. I blame yeah. you. Yeah." That's the only thing that hurts. I'm like, that ain't you, babe. I can relate to you on that because mm-hmm. Kenzie has been open about every relationship she's been in, in the past. She's been cheated on by every guy she's I'm been the with. only person I've never, I haven't been cheated on that I know of. Is you? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so there are times when she'll question me about this, this, and this. And I'm like, babe, I didn't do what they did to you. Like, I, I deserve a, a clean slate. I deserve a, re- a real chance. But something, it's not just now. Like, I don't go on my day to day. And think he's cheating. Neither do I. But like, yeah, but like what you said, Val, you'll see something and you're like, I have experienced that before you. Actually, ironically, when he was ring shopping and he was disappearing for hours and wouldn't (laughs) tell me what he was doing, I was getting really upset because I'm like, oh, I've been through this. You do not have a good excuse. It's happened a couple (laughs) times. Like. You bad as hell and lying and at least come up with something better. Meanwhile, I'm I'm shopping for like her dream ring and spending more money but, than I've ever spent my it's entire life. Because like I've been here and like that it, it becomes terrifying because especially now, like I have like th- like a son that I love and a family, and it's like your whole like I can just feel myself twist when something happens, like oh all, all the things that I would lose and that heartbreak too, because it's two, it's not one. I'm like, oh, 
oh, I'm gonna have a custody battle with your it'll ass. It'll never, it'll <laughs> never happen. Oh, no. It'll never happen, man. You're, you're all, you, both you and Val are good now. You're with two good guys. I'll tell you that. Yeah, for sure. yeah. <laughs> hey, but I understand what you're going through. So look, man, I go through it too sometimes. But I, you know, so I've been trying to surprise her with stuff, and so like my movement may, may be a little different. So we just come to the point like, you know, babe, f it. I'm doing this. So like, oh, why you tell me? Oh, uh, because <laughs> you sitting there. I just go and spill the beans, man. No, don't do that. Like my birthday party last year, I, I had I threw a surprise birthday party for last year. It was the worst time of my life trying to get this <laughs> set up. I'm talking about I'm going around her trying to get numbers. I'm on Instagram, Cheryl Burton and all these celebrities and people. And like, hey man, this is Jabba, you know, I'm I'm you know, I'm, I'm the one that's married to Val, and I'm trying to get you to come to a birthday party. She'll probably love it. She didn't mention your name. I'm trying to do all this without her questioning me, right? And yeah. And she dating for her no, birthday No, it was the week of, because I was like, what are we doing for my birthday? I said, we usually do stuff for my birthday, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't know this. I'm like, well, I'm going to orchestrate a dinner. I'm going to plan a dinner, like with the family. Because like our family yeah. mm-hmm. always gets together. He was like, babe. I, and then he, oh, thank God he didn't spill it, because I was completely surprised. But I had started calling Chef that I know and I was like setting it up and he was like I got this just, I I just got be you. ready Friday at 7 I was like okay but I was getting the attitude because I was like oh he don't understand so how I, I do birthdays yeah, really, <laughs> she did it she never knew about the party because we he was sending me to Jamaica so yeah. that I was cool with that but I wanted something we was going to dinner family. and we took the kids I said okay I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have the family involved. So I had the kids. Who think if you got Max, Zoe in the car, and and her mother that we're finna go to a birthday party, like a, some big old surprise birthday that's party, smart. like a family dinner? Like yeah, you weren't gonna think. Yeah, that's it. good. I like that. Just love your happiness. Love your whole vibe, you guys. Honestly, we thank you for being our very first guest on it the means Romance a lot Podcast. To us. We love both of you for real. Thank Aww. you. I love thank you guys. You guys. Right. And feel free yeah. to cut out whatever you need to cut out because I know it did go off. None of it. None of it. I loved it all. I loved it all. You guys are perfect.